Let's talk about Andy Sedaris. Before he was a director, producer, actor, and screenwriter, Sedaris worked in sports television, directing countless football, basketball, Olympic, and other special events, winning seven Emmy Awards in his field of work, one of which was in 1969 for the Summer Olympics. He is probably best known for his work with ABC's Wide World of Sports as the show's very first director, continuing that position for over 20 years. But you see, capturing the sporting event itself was not what set Andy apart from the pack. He pioneered what he would come to call the honey shot, close-ups of cheerleaders and other various pretty girls in the stands at sporting events, cut to 1985 with the release of Malibu Express, the first film in the coveted Andy Sedaris collection, giving birth to Malibu Bay Films. Can you smell that? That's premium 100% grade A sleaze, folks. The films of Malibu Bay are best known for having playmates and acting roles. Acting, getting naked, it's really the same thing, isn't it? Plots about secret agents, spies shooting guns, and blowing a whole bunch of shit up. Andy Sedaris unfortunately passed away in 2007, but he left us with a legacy of babes, bombs, and bullets to enjoy for a lifetime. Films like Seven, Malibu Express, Picasso Trigger, Savage Beach, Guns, Do or Die, Hard Hunted, Fit to Kill, and the one that I have personally chosen for your submitted approval, Hard Ticket to Hawaii. We begin with a sex scene, which, let's face it, is about as surprising as Michael Ironside losing an arm. These are our main characters, Rowdy and Donna, a couple madly in love but struggling to stay together due to their dangerous career paths as secret agents. Rowdy is played by Ron Moss, best known for being in The Bold and the Beautiful, and Donna is played by Donna Spear, best known for being Playmate of the Month circa 1984. Is this not amazing fan service? I don't understand you twihards. This movie features soap hunks and playboy bunnies. This is the ultimate in movie fat material. Here are our villains for the film, Shades, Skater, and the Fat Samoan. Can you guess who's who? We're treated to some fantastic opening credits. I mean, this just oozes creativity. Credits pasted to boxes in a warehouse, and knowing the star power in this movie, I'm sure many of these boxes are known to vibrate from time to time. Oh yes, this movie features a giant rubber snake, and it has about as much to do with the plot as anything else does in this movie. So what is the plot, exactly? We've narrowed down already that our leads are secret agents. There's a big-ass snake, which I'll just tell you now, has been mutated via toxic chemicals. We'll call him Tromi the Rubber Snake. And there's a crime boss named Mr. Chang that smuggles diamonds with a remote control helicopter onto the island. So there isn't really a plot here. It's a series of random events tied together by softcore sex scenes. I could dig it. The agency expects us to be fit at all times. But I'm still just a civilian. Doesn't mean you can't be fucked. You know, she's got a point. Just because I'm a movie geek... ...doesn't mean I can't be Hulk status. Donna and her partner Taryn are in charge of getting a snake to a wildlife park, but the cheese dicks at the warehouse loaded Tromi onto the plane instead. An honest mistake, really. They just happened to put the normal snake directly next to the deadly toxic snake. The diamond delivery is thwarted when the bad babes spot the diamond copter and kick the shit at a skater in Samoa Joe. I'm sorry, I just haven't caught his name yet. They take one box of the diamonds and leave the other in the bushes because we need extra conflict later? A woman walks into a restaurant to meet with a TV director. This scene honestly has no point other than to establish Edie, a contact for the agency that Donna and Rowdy work for. But out of curiosity, let's see what else this scene has to offer. You practically raped me last night. That was last night, Charlie. Looks like they almost killed you. This is Mr. Romero. The diamonds were supposed to go to him. He isn't too happy with his goons for failing to deliver. If brains were birdshit, you'd have a clean cage. Well, at least they don't have shit for brains, I guess. The bad babes take a casual naked dip together in their hot tub to look at the diamonds. I don't question their logic. Did 
see these hands? These hands are lethal weapons. Confucius say, man with deadly hands must be very careful while slapping on aftershave. Oh, I think you know what's coming. I'm bad! Rowdy and his partner Jade receive intel on a sandwich that Romero has a drug operation on the island. They don't even know about the giant rubber snake or the diamonds yet. Shit's gonna get real. I don't believe it. You have another spy movie poster? And in German yet? Yeah, it's a real killer, isn't it? Oh no. Your eyes do not deceive you. I was but once an action exploitation movie star. I won't lie, I miss that summer. Romero sends a big jack check and some squirrely dude to get the diamonds from Donna and Taryn. The Lunk goons saw their Molokai cargo plane, so naturally Romero knows it's them. The snake escapes in the middle of the scuffle. Romero spots it from like 30 feet away and freaks out shooting it. How is this wiener a crime boss again? Go ahead, I'm okay. That dubbing was fucking terrible. Romero is shot in the face but lives. The snake is free to slither about the island, and our bad babes go to meet Edie at the restaurant to talk about the diamonds. But little do they know that Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw Massacre The Next Generation has been listening into their conversation. Hey, Jimmy John Jackson, Southern Cable Sports Network. A wild Jimmy John Jackson appears to sell steroids to football players. Man, I sure love soul food. Right on, bro. What the fuck was the point of that scene? Donna and Taryn get in contact with Rowdy and Jake, who are catching the next flight into the island to help put a stop to the malarkey that's been afoot. Filler sex scene. That's Taryn getting it on with Jimmy John. They know each other because they do. Rowdy and Jade arrive, but they never expected, nor did they have wished to see what took place on the road on that very day. He must be smoking some heavy doobies. Warning! Remember what I said about street trash? Well, I lied. This is the most utterly absurd scene in a movie ever filmed. Let me give you the play-by-play. -play. The bad guy referred to as Skater rolls past the bad dude's jeep carrying a blow-up doll and a rifle. He manages to injure Jade through shrapnel from the bullet bouncing off the jeep. In retribution, they back the jeep up, hitting Skater, sending him soaring through the air, blasting him with a rocket while in mid-flight and taking out the blow-up doll. What is this? I don't even. Okay, let's do some catch-up. The snake kills some tourists, Rowdy and Jade's jeep breaks down, so they call Edie to pick them up. The creepy crossdresser looking thing is actually a creepy crossdresser, and it kidnaps Edie. Donna and Taryn spot Shades playing frisbee with a beach chick, and in basically the same area, they spot that Edie's been kidnapped by Romero's other goons. You know, watching this movie is a blast, but trying to talk about it is like forcing puzzle pieces together that don't fucking fit. Rowdy and Jade manage to hitch a ride into town, and Taryn and Donna use a payphone at a sumo club. He was put there to spy on Edie. So the girl is a guy, and the guy is a plant. You're catching on. Well, when they put it that way, it does sound pretty normal. Look, it's developing. The snake! Crossdressers, diamonds, and a giant rubber snake. Is there anything else that this movie wants me to follow? This is Jimmy John Jackson, Southern Go fuck an iceberg. Rowdy and Jade arrive. They head to Taryn and Donna's. They have a group huddle, and some more info about the snake is revealed, like how its toxins will eventually kill it. What about the diamonds? I don't know. Cool, what about the plan? Ah. Jade and Taryn do some serious drinking, the bodybuilder chick shows off her posing routine, and we get some intel on Shades. She plays frisbee with this guy every day. Good. I can use that. I bet you'll never guess how. How about you get lost? What do you mean? GTFO, bitch, I'm playing frisbee. <laughs> Our 
Our heroes barrel their way into the bad guy's lair, the director's beach house. Donna drops what are mentioned as noise grenades to get the bad guy's attention, but is there really any point to that? Rowdy and Jay just drove a fucking jeep through their fence. For some reason, Donna decides to stay behind while the rest of the team take off in a van. I really think Sidaris just wanted to set this scene up but had no idea how to do it other than I'm staying behind, which leads to the agents going, oh shit, Romero's still alive. Donna is doing her hair, only to get attacked by the lingering Romero, and a fight to the bitter end ensues with Romero getting his ass handed to him for the most part. Hey, where's Tromi? Yay! Tromi kills Romero, who really should already be dead at this point. And then again, he took a bullet to the face, so who knows what kind of punishment that dude can take. Rowdy shows up for the save and shoots Tromi the giant rubber misunderstood snake in the face. Well, with the snake dead, it looks like it's all over. In a pig's ass. Oh yeah, you. It's a So with the evil foiled at the end of the day, our sexy heroes decide to keep the diamonds and party it up on the Malibu Express. In closing, I'll leave you with some words of wisdom that this movie has taught me. Watch out for skateboarders with blow-up dolls and always check your toilet for snakes.